Okay, so we're sitting here at Bread and Butter with Jeff Staple from Staple Design. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. A staple design. Is it is it representing New York all the way? Um, yeah. I. It's hard to say when you come from New York. It's like you are New York. I don't have to represent New York. I am New York. You know what I mean? So it's like the designs don't have to like shout. Some some say New York, but like not everything is like I love New York or like has like New York you know Empire State Building or something like that on it. So I think there's like a feeling that comes from our collection that is authentically New York. Yeah. What is the main fashion thing in New York now? Oh, that's you know, it's really hard to say because there's so many different subcultures in New York. That's what make New York. That's what makes New York dope. Is that there's a lot of different, um, I call it spheres of influence. You know, like different pockets of culture that uh, each one has their own importance. You know, you go uptown and there's like Lincoln Center and there's people there wearing like suits and trench coats and Burberry, you know. And then you go to Midtown and then there's people that wear Diesel and Kenneth Cole. And then there's people downtown and, you know, they're wearing like Supreme and like street culture and stuff. So like... There's, and each one plays its part in New York, you know, that's what's really dope about it. And, and they all wear staple? They can, yeah, that's what's really, you know, when I started staple, just even in the name, I didn't really want it to like be too tightly associated with any one culture because um, even in the way I think and the way I design, I get influenced by a lot of different things, a lot of different people, a lot of countries, you know, it's not just about one thing. I have favorites, obviously, you know, I love, like, um, you know, hip-hop culture had a really important aspect for me, uh, skateboarding, graffiti, these were all really important things when I was growing up, but I also love graphic design, interior design, you know, I also love photography, I love fine dining, I love cosmetics, you know, these things all, like, affect me as well, so when I, when I started my company, I really wanted it to be able to cross over into different types of people, different cultures, you know. Um, and hence the word staple, it's just like a basic necessity, you know. Um, that's what staple means, so that's why I named my company that. So your, your inspiration, you, you just said so, a lot of different people, uh, different cities. Uh, how, how does that uh, reflect to your uh, 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 line of clothing now? I would say just by virtue of the fact that I want all those different people to be able to wear it, I think about that when I design, you know. Um, first of all, I think about myself when I, when I design something. I w I want to be able to feel comfortable in it and have it functional and you know have it be good. Um, also all the little details I try to look out for, you know, every little uh, stitch button snap down to every little hang tag, main label, side label, the packaging, the, the way that's taped, I want everything to be like all set, you know. Um, and so the other thing that I do is I think about how other people are going to perceive it. So I look in the mirror and I'm like, what if I'm like a 75-year-old white dude or a 16-year-old black kid or a 24-year-old gay guy? You know, I try to think about all these things like, will it work, you know? Um, and again, going like towards the, the mission of Staple, I want it to be sort of all all encompassing to everybody. I don't want to be inclusive to one type of person, you know? So what are your own favorite brands that you look out or get inspiration from or um, clothing brands any brand oh yeah I never look at clothing brands I never look at fashion magazines you know for inspiration or anything like that I I only look outside of the industry so I look at like furniture I look at automotive I look at photography um, you know I, I try to draw things from other industries in order to get inspired I feel like if you look People who look within other fashion brands for inspiration, why are you doing that? Like, you're just gonna like regurgitate something that's already been done exactly the same, you know? Um, I do believe though that like nothing is new under the sun. So as a designer, I don't really expect designers to like think of something totally original that's never been done. No, that's impossible. Everything's pretty much been done. The key is like, how do you influence from like, take influence from one thing here, one thing there, you know, a painting. Uh, a building and a car you do a clothing like okay how do those things become clothing you know and maybe the 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 user can't even figure out where that that stitch came from oh that came from the line of a BMW you know what I mean and the user might not even know that but it doesn't matter you brought something new to the table you know you, you did the pigeon dunk and um, everybody goes crazy over it 
Oh man. Still, after all these years. No. I don't know. It's just. You just know. you did that, and it's it's moved yeah. moving on. Come on, yeah. I mean, it was really. Um, I I think about it often, you know, because people always remind me of it, right? And I'm like, man, this it's like how many years now? It's been six years now since the pigeon dunk, right? But people talk about it like it happened last week, and that just is a testament to how how much that was a stake in the sand of sneaker culture. Like that was like a flagpole, you know? Um, and let's face it, at the end of the day, in all honesty, the pigeon dunk and the pigeon itself is not a design landmark, right? So in other words, I could, I could, you could t tell like 20 design kids right now to redo the pigeon dunk and they could do it easily. It's technically not hard, right? It's gray, light gray, white, pink. Oh, it's a bird, right? But something happened there that that made magic, right? And what that is to me, that magic is hard work. That's what that is. So people people know about the pigeon dunk, but they don't always realize that I was doing staple eight, ten years grinding before that that led up to that point, you know? So so what can we expect for staple uh, in the future? I have my blog and I have my Twitter and I just like telling people what's going on, when it's gonna happen. I, I kind of take like the Apple Steve Jobs approach, you know, like the day I talk about it is the day you can go buy it. I guarantee you there'll be a lot of cool stuff coming out in 2010. It's gonna be an exciting year for everything that we do, but um, you know, I'd rather just work at it and like work at it and really the reason why is I want to perfect it so that when it's available, it's like it's ready, you know, I don't want to rush it. All right, Jeff, I want to thank you very much. It was a very good interview and uh, yeah, good luck and all the best. Yep, thanks a lot, man.